last year was the worst year for retail sales since records began. The British Retail Consortium says sales were down 0.1% last year. That's compared to a rise of 1.2% in 2018. At the same time, figures from Barclay Card suggest people are spending more on leisure and entertainment. Well, let's head to Wakefield now. We can speak to retail analyst Kate Hardcastle. Kate, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon and congratulations, Sarah Jane. Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. You should have positioned yourself better. Then you could have been in between those wings as a retail angel, uh, which, is what, <laughs> which, is angel. What, which is what retail re needs right now. We're talking about a slump of 0.1%, which doesn't sound that much. Is it actually that bad? I think what is bad is the fact that we've got this huge change in evolution, this dynamic in retail where some of the organisations who are performing well seem to have the answers for now. But because of the involvement of how consumers are taking more of the front lead in terms of what they want, how they want it, when they want it, a lot of businesses that are large and perhaps a little bit challenging for them to turn their strategies around quickly enough, are struggling to keep up. Now, that's not to make excuses for a lot of businesses that just haven't invested enough and seen the future enough and have perhaps made hay while the sun was shining too much. It's interesting, this week there's been two tales from the high street, if you like. You've got the likes of John Lewis struggling a little bit to the point where it seems that staff may not get their bonuses. Uh, that's not been confirmed. Then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got Greg's, uh, the High Street Bakers, which off the back of that vegan sausage roll are going to roll out £7 million worth of bonuses to their uh, employees. It equates to about £300 an employee, but certainly nothing to, uh, to be sniffed that's at. That's a lot of vegan but sausage rolls. <laughs> Certainly, it shows that organisations like Aldi, Lidl, Greggs, the embarrassment factor's gone. People are very proud to be getting the best value. And those organisations are not just driving a product that's the cheapest possible product. They're looking for the best value for money. Uh, Greg's have got a strategy where they're trying to be in the pickup food places, service stations, train stations, as well as the high streets. They've changed the business, evolved it. They're looking to vegetarian and vegan options. These things aren't as simple as they seem. There's a lot of infrastructure built into that. If you compare that to someone like John Lewis, very traditional business. It's had very good years. It's almost been the bellwether of retail, but it's got two very conflicting strategies. It's trying to be a department store that's a nice experience, trying to invest in its own brand. And then it's got this never knowingly undersold offer, which basically means that whilst the rest of retail is on a kind of drive to the bottom in terms of discounting, they've got to price match on all of those big label, big ticket item goods. Very challenging times for them. And you can look at them and say, well, that's just a changing face of retail. Or you can say, look, there's so much data out there, almost a data overload. Should the organisation's leaders who have paid the big bucks to do it, should they, Sarah Jane, have actually seen the way and built a business robust enough for that? Yeah, because M&S first, John Lewis, Boots, we hear, uh, are struggling a little bit as well. Really established names that you think, God, they could never disappear from the high street. They might. Not saying they will, but they might. Um, and just in terms of the overall picture, I hate to mention the B word. Uh, we've mentioned it once on the show today, Brexit. There's a, a bill being voted for as we speak. Um, but how much did that play a part, do you think, on um, consumer psychology in terms of tightening the purse strings? Do you, see, do you think there'll be more spending in 2020? I think what consumers did, you're right, to touch on the psychology element, is they want to have a jour de free, they want to have life that they enjoy, experiences they enjoy. They're very much buying things for now, and it's very much about filling social media with positive images too. So they're very aware they don't need as much stuff to do that. They've also got a lot more aware of the sustainability, environment, ethics. You'll hear a lot of people saying, I'm not buying as much this year, but I'm going to go and travel more or do something differently instead. We've got this growth of the experience economy. We've got these challenges in retail with an almost oversaturation with brands and amount of goods out there. And we've got very challenging times. It's no easy road for retail, but that doesn't mean it's dead. It just means that it has to move at speed. It has to move with those consumers as they change. Uh, what does this new government need to do to support the high street in terms of business rates, rents, wages? 
Simply put, I'd like to ask them to use two ears and one mouth in that order. I'd like them to start listening to what each of the towns and cities want, very individual needs because different demographics in different places, celebrating the places we live and we love, more green spaces, more housing, more residential in those, more services and less dependence on retail. But when we have retail there, it's got to be good. It's got to deal in the currency of human beings, okay. which by that I mean great customer service. Kate Harcastle, always good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us here on Sky News.